So let's start at the beginning. Where did you come from and how, what brought you to Claremont? You know, it's interesting. Where do you come from is a question that I use to facilitate administrators today learning to listen. But the most important one, I think, is probably from my family and principally from my grandmother, who made me feel at all times and under all conditions that right here, I'm okay. So I come from this grandmother. I grew up in Chicago, went to this incredible school, and this, this one particular teacher, along with my parents, obviously, this one particular teacher um, suggested that I be a counselor at a day camp when I was age 10. He always said, when you're speaking to five-year-olds, get down on your knees so you look them directly in the eye, and so there's no question to them that you have compassion for them and you really get to know them. I think I was a counselor every single year from age 10 to 18. And then I went to this, this remarkable college that uh, was all about group work, about facilitating uh, groups. George Williams College back in Illinois. You know, I played sports, I did all those things, but somehow it was about working with people. It was always about helping others to be the best they could be. Somehow I saw in fifth and sixth graders this moment when the light bulbs started to go off in their brains, where they started to see things as being connected. I made a choice. I'm going to go to graduate school and I'm going to become a fifth and sixth grade teacher. That's how I got to Claremont. So it was graduate school that brought you to Claremont. Yeah, basically. The teaching opportunity. Indeed. Made the choice and said, Claremont Graduate School is going to let me start teaching as soon as possible, even though I'd already been a teacher. I wasn't licensed and credentialed. And uh, then some additional magic occurred. You know, it was I went around looking at all these different elementary schools and checking them out and seeing what the climate was like because I knew what I wanted to be in. I wanted to be in a place that was dynamic. And I visited Sycamore School. The door was open. Now I was going to walk through it. And I literally spent five, maybe six months, at least from January to June, being a volunteer aide in Mrs. Page's classroom. Now, I might have contributed something to her classroom and her kids, but what she contributed to me was really beyond compare. Here was a woman of gentle spirit and a certainty of what she was going to do for kids, and there was no mistaking it. It was her agenda, and it was going to get done, but in the kindest, gentlest, but firm way. And so I just spent my time learning from her, and she increasingly kept giving me pieces of responsibility, and I felt like I was a co-teacher come June. And somewhere in there, John Bobo came to me and says, you know, I think we're going to hire you somehow, some way. And sure enough, a position came open, and he gave me the job, and the rest is a little bit of history. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you if few names, throw, a few, sure. throw a few names out there and give me your immediate responses. Yeah. Paul Douglas. You know, we went to school together. We went to graduate school together. And uh, Paul was brilliant, innovative. We were different. You know, it wasn't as if Paul had his guitar and maybe I had my basketball. But there was space for each of us to play on that level. And I always felt a great respect for him and him for me. We were just two people toiling in this profound work, and there was enough space created by a principal and maybe some of the senior teachers there who kind of took us under their wings and you know, gave us permission to create. Lenny Katz. I hardly knew Lenny. He was a predecessor. He wasn't there while I was there, but I heard of Lenny Katz, and I've read his paper about the environment of... Uh, playgrounds and the environment of a school and the environment of a classroom and how does it create this well-being and the, um, ownership. Rosemary Sullivan. Oh God, as sweet as they come. Impassioned, compassionate, you know, great partner. John Bobo. I mean, John trusted in me. Stayed out of my way. Let me educate his child. Pumped me up. has been a lifelong friend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it just doesn't get much better than that. Yeah. It's a connection that kind of goes beyond any notion of career. He saw the best in everybody and would do everything in his power to make them see the best in themselves. You know, John had a capacity to be sort of a, this maybe sound bad, but sort of like a, a fool, you know, in a fun way. 
you know, just didn't care that he might be judged for being overly exuberant or silly, but he created space for all kinds of people to be there. You know, and kids knew that he was sort of a Pied Piper. You know, this was a good guy, just a great guy who loved them completely. It was kind of a calling for him to be a principal. It wasn't a job, you know, it was just it was who he was. You know, and he took hits sometimes, I think, for being um, present when the recall election took place. He stuck his nose way out on the line for Sycamore School in the face of the district's administration, really probably wanting it to go smoothly and Sycamore School just to close. John didn't give a damn about what the district administration might have thought about his advocacy for the school. He just went for it because he knew it was right. I don't think he ever got the credit, if you will, for being so courageous, putting his own career at risk. I feel okay about the guy, in other words. <laughs> yes. What are you most looking forward to? I'm this just, week? you know, like we're doing right now, sitting across from somebody, seeing the goodness in them, hearing their story, feeling like their lives are fulfilled, just being with them. You know, and the imagination of coming here is more than anybody could imagine. You know, as I was looking forward to coming here, I relived every aspect of being a teacher. The moments, even the doubts, but mostly the magic of learning. So what could be better than that? So being here is just being here, you know? Talking, reminiscing, laughing, you know, it just hearing how the perceptions occurred and how it became this over here on this side. And, and it's really different over on this side. And somehow those notions are going to meet and we're all going to laugh and, you know, understand right. that, well, we see the world differently, but it's okay. So I'm just it's being here now, you know, hanging out with people whose lives we touched.